Uh oh, it looks like we got some leaks there. Today we're working on my 95 Suburban and we're gonna be changing the oil cooler lines and the reason is they're leaking. Apparently it's a pretty common issue with these vehicles, but I wanna say more that it's a common issue with the oil cooler lines because I've already had these replaced just a few years ago when I bought this truck. As a matter of fact, in September of 2015, this truck was in the dealership having a few things fixed. One was the air conditioning, the other one was the ABS, and one of the issues was the oil cooler lines. They were leaking. The dealer only charged me $56 to fix them. So I said, why not do it? Well, they did it. I checked the work. They were fixed with brand new oil cooler lines, but they're already leaking again. So far as I can tell, and every bit of research I can do online, it's the crimp connection where the metal meets the rubber hose. Being that these cooler lines that are only about four years old are already leaking, and I know they're AC Delco, they were installed by the dealership, I decided to go out on a limb and choose the Dorman brand, partially because they were the only ones available to be shipped right away. I would have went AC Delco again, just because I totally believe in sticking with OEM, but but again, they weren't available. They were like two months out for shipping. So I decided to try out Dorman. They look relatively the same. I can't imagine them being any worse quality of a product than these ones that are on my truck, being that these ones only lasted about four years. So we'll just try them. Here's my radiator. And you can see just through there, this line is actually the oil cooler line. There's another one down below. So we need to get this line unscrewed from there. But because of the clearance issues, I think I have to remove this canister and just move it aside. So we'll start with that. And I've got my 13 millimeter on here. I don't think it's the exact size, but it's working. So we'll just go with that. So I just need to loosen this bracket enough to be able to pull this canister up and out. And I will also have to obviously remove both of these lines from the top. Okay, so now I have the canister up and out of the way, which definitely gives us a whole heck of a lot more room to get in there and try to loosen this fitting. First thing I'll do though is go ahead and spray some penetrating oil. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is try to break these lines free. I have my 20 millimeter wrench and I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a couple of hits. Oh, just like that, broke free. Cool, that's loose. I'll just leave it snug for now. And what about the bottom one here? Hopefully this bottom one will be just as easy. Oh, that was very easy. Very little pressure to break that loose. So that's awesome. Okay, so under the vehicle here, uh, we have this panel that I think I do need to remove. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Okay, so we have the panel removed and we needed to do that to access this bolt right here to this bracket that is securing the two oil cooler lines. So now that I have proper access to this bolt and light going to it so I can see what the heck it is I'm doing, I will remove this bolt. Okay, so I am able to get my 13 millimeter socket in there, very slowly <laughs> loosen this bolt. All right, with the bolt removed, I can, well, the bracket just fell out, but here it is. And I'll go ahead and set that aside. Now that we have nothing holding our two lines in place, all I have to do is remove these two lines with the quick disconnect fittings here. So here's the first line, it's draining out and I was able to get that sucker out of there just by pressing the two tabs on that plastic quick disconnect fitting. I did have to use a flathead screwdriver and uh, use some ingenuity there, but it did ultimately come out and a little bit of oil is leaking out, just the residual in the line. I have a drain pan catching it all, of course. I'm now gonna remove this bottom line completely. I don't know if any oil is gonna come out here, so I have a rag. It is the bottom line, but we'll see. All right, not much. Well, it does look like there is a little bit coming out. I'll go ahead and pull that line the rest of the way out from the bottom. I'm gonna keep my rag here just to catch that residual oil. And there is a little bit of oil coming out of there. So I went ahead and put a drain bucket down here to catch the drips. And of course I have my other drain bucket under here catching the oil coming out of the oil cooler line itself. Okay guys, so here is the first oil cooler line that I was able to remove from my truck. This is the lower hanging one. So the failure point is right here at these connections and the oil just slowly starts to seep past this connection and basically causing a gigantic oily, muddy mess. And see underneath there, it's all wet. And you can see just how dirty this other side is. And this is the side that actually attaches to the uh, radiator. There's no issues here at the fitting, but I think at this junction, this is where all the problems 
problems come. So we're gonna go ahead and get these both replaced. Okay guys, so the second line on the bottom, which is the upper line, is completely removed and draining out into the drain pan. And now we're just gonna go ahead and loosen it from up here at the radiator and pull it out, simple as that. And here is that second line I was talking about. It has been removed and it is draining out right into the drain bucket. What I was hoping to be able to show you was exactly how to remove these clips. And all you do on these tabs here is you just simply press in the tab. Once you press in those tabs, you are releasing the edge of this clip from inside its housing and you can pull the line straight out. It's fairly simple once you get a hang of how these tabs work. And here looking at this second line, we can see the fitting that is actually underneath the car, not the fitting that's closest to the radiator, but the side that is closest to the uh, oil filter. This is the weak point. This is where both of them failed. You can see the buildup of gunk right there. So that's not a good thing. I, I really hope they have addressed this problem by now um, in the manufacturing process of making these things. But uh, we'll go ahead and install our new ones and hope for the best. But you can definitely see the failure point right there. And if you have oil cooler lines that look like this, well, you probably need to replace them. Okay, so we have our lines fished through. I know which one this is. This is the bottom one. So I'm just gonna leave this alone for now. And hopefully you can see our top line up in here. So all I have to do is put on this quick disconnect plastic piece and I should be able to just slide this right back into the housing and it should clip right into place. Okay, so it's clipped on there. All right, so we got the first one clipped in and now we have to work on the bottom. Okay, so here we are with the bottom one and all we have to do again is just push this plastic clip on just like that. The plastic clip is fully installed. Okay, so now we just need to fully seat this clip here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab onto the line here with my hand and just push. There we go, clipped right in. Okay, so I've already made the bottom connection and I just have to make this connection here at the top. I did put some grease around the O-ring. Just gonna make sure that I'm going in straight here. Perfect. Now that we're in straight, I can slowly but surely tighten this up. And it does not need to be like He-Man tight, just tight enough to compress that O-ring in there. Okay, so everything is now installed and the only thing left to do is start the Suburban to make sure there are no leaks and hopefully there's not because that job sucked. Okay, so we got it started. Not seeing any leaks here at all, which is good. Uh-oh, looks like we got some leaks there. Okay, well, um, it seems I have a leak right there. So we're gonna figure out how to get this taken back apart. And what I think is going to have to happen is I'm gonna have to replace those two screw-in fittings right there. And I think the only way to really do that is going to be to remove that entire oil filter housing. Unfortunately, I think we have a little bit bigger of a problem to fix here, but we will get it done. Okay guys, so I am going to have to remove these and replace them. Uh, there is an o-ring inside that seems to obviously be defunct, being that uh, I had such a bad leak on both of these. So um, it was probably removing the old line that disrupted that o-ring and who knows if it's cracked or whatever. I'll have to wait till I take these out to be able to see that. Um, but there was a big support bar that went here I took out also just so I have access to this. I did have to remove the oil filter in order to remove the bolt to take this bar out from here. And if you grab your half inch ratchet and a one inch socket, it'll fit over perfectly. And these things aren't really screwed in that tight, so it's fairly easy to knock loose. And uh, I should be able to get this out by hand now, just like that. Well, here are the two fittings that I just removed. And if you take a look inside, you can see one of them has a green O-ring and the other one does also have a green O-ring, but it has another sort of O-ring keeper right in front of it. And that's missing on this one. So I have no idea where that uh, orange O-ring went on this fitting here. I don't know what's going on here. That's probably the source of my leak. So the only thing I can do at this point is to go to the hardware store and replace these completely. Okay guys, just like that, it is the next day. We're back. Uh, I got some parts that I needed. I got those two connections that I needed and a new oil filter. So let's get that stuff and get started finishing this project that we began replacing these oil cooler lines and now along with the oil cooler line connectors. So here's my oil filter. I had to go with the PF52E. Uh, they only sell the E versions nowadays. And I had to get 
two different uh, quick disconnect fittings for those the oil cooler line connectors. Basically, this is the Dorman unit and this is the AC Delco unit. And the reason why I had to do it this way was because I initially put an order in the night before to O'Reilly Auto Parts for, as you can see, a quantity of five. And everywhere I can tell, the, they sell these in a package of five of them for $16.99. Well, when I went to go pick it up this morning at 9.30, this bag was obviously ripped open and there was only one of them in here. So the only other one they had in the store was this Dorman unit and this was on the shelf and the guy just gave me a deal because they kind of messed up. So um, we basically have one AC Delco OEM part and one Dorman part, but you know, I mean, I looked at them both. The gaskets are a little bit different, which I'm gonna show you here in a second, but for the most part, I think they're gonna perform and function exactly the same. So here is the AC Delco unit. Here is the Dorman unit. Now, when you look inside of these, uh, you can see they look similar, but the uh, O-ring and gasketing material is a little bit different, just different colored. Both set up in terms of the functionality exactly the same. So the AC Delco one is this one with the black, uh, outer gasket there and the Dorman one has the white and the red o-ring and um, so a little bit different on the gasket material but in terms of form and function I think they're both going to function exactly the same they're both made out of the same materials so let's throw these on and see if we can finish this job okay so here we are back under the truck and what you're looking at here is the oil filter housing and you can also see the two ports for those connectors that I just bought um, the oil filter is of course not there I had to remove that in order to gain access to remove this weird support bar that connected right there. At least now we have all the room in the world to work with here and we're gonna start screwing in these new connectors right into those two ports. Okay, so what I'm doing is putting the AC Delco unit up top. Uh, being that that's OEM, it's you know supposed that that one's going to last the longest. So it would also be the hardest to get to. Um, so I'm gonna put that on top and then I'll put the Dorman unit here, and that way we can see if one or the other ever starts leaking. Also, since there's literally no way for me to get anything else in there in terms of some kind of tool, I'm just using this uh, universal joint on my ratchet, and uh, this sucks, but it's getting the job done. Okay, so here we have the Dorman connector and I'm just going to start screwing this one in. Luckily we have a little more room with this one so I don't have to use that weird universal joint on my ratchet. So the ratchet and the one inch socket just slide right in there and you know there's not a whole lot of room but it's definitely easier than using that uh, universal joint that's for sure. All right so now we're working on the Dorman one and we're going to see if we can just push this line straight in. Here we go. There we go. Nice solid connection there. Same for the top one. Both are fully inserted. And I know for a fact that all of the gaskets and O-rings are all installed also. Okay, so we have our two connections back on. Everything is good and secure. And we have our oil filter back in. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna give this thing a start. And we'll look underneath. So far, I don't see any leaks. It's a good sign. I don't see any leaks there either. Nor do I see any leaks down at the bottom. No leaks, guys. Good news. All right, guys, well, I think we can finally call this job done. I just uh, arrived here at O'Reilly Auto Parts to drop off all of my used oil. And so far, so good, no leaks. We're looking underneath the vehicle. We can see that nothing is dumping out, no oil leaks, nothing like that. So that's all good. And under the hood here, we can see that there are no leaks coming out of the uh, connections down there to the radiator. So we're good there. And that's about it, guys. Uh, the job was fairly difficult. I'm gonna give it like a five out of 10 on the difficulty scale, um, only because of the tight quarters, not because what I was doing was hard or anything. Um, it was actually a very easy job, just a very tight space to work in. And then you have to deal with the extra fittings that I had to get because I had the oil leak and all that stuff. If you're out there and you're getting ready to do this job, absolutely 100% you must get the new fittings for this job. Because they contain the all new O-rings and gaskets inside, uh, that's gonna basically keep you from having the problem I had, which was leaking, you know, O-rings and gaskets and stuff. Um, 
after I reinstalled the lines and put everything back together. Huge pain in the butt, but hey, at least I was able to figure it out and get it fixed. And uh, now I don't have, you know, leaking oil cooler lines anymore. Hopefully for the next, you know, few years anyway. Well, hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, please don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up. And also, if you're not a subscriber, subscribe. We're hitting about 73,000 subscribers as I make this video. So we're growing fast. We have a lot of content coming up, especially regarding this 95 Suburban. I'm gonna be building this thing up. We're gonna be turning it into an overlanding rig of sorts. And uh, actually, if you wanna be part of the team, you can go to my website at www.oneroadgarage.com. And there you can see a link that says, join the team and read more about it. Uh, basically looking for backers to help build this thing. So the first step is going to be a lift and tires, and then we're just gonna go you know, from there. So just trying to keep it simple, stupid, and do uh, what makes the most sense first. And that's the goal here with this truck. I've always wanted to build one of these up, and that's what we're gonna be doing. So anyways, guys, I'm Jimmy again for One Road, and I will see you in the next one.